Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a few cards that have gone up in price recently. You may have these cards in your binder, or more likely than not, they are still in bulk. So let's start with the Dusk Urchin. It is a rare from Shadowmoor. Recently, when I mean recently, I meant yesterday, the card was 58 cents, around 60 cents. Today it is almost eight dollars let's say seven and a half dollars the reason it has gone up is it has interactions with minus one minus one counters like i said previously a lot of cards in shadow more have been spiking due to being semi-relatable to the new Cat cards this is true for any set with a unique mechanic such as cycling now, if cycling is strong enough, then the cards that promote cycling from older sets will go up in price. The same will be said for the minus one, minus one counters of Shadowmoor. Is this card $7.50? Probably not. Like the Devoted Druid, I get it. It makes an infinite combo. It's in modern, it's not a bad combo. I like the combo quite a bit because it's you know, the cards themselves have are advantageous to have, so even if the combo breaks, you can still maybe aggro them or mana accelerate into something bigger. So Dusk Urchins is a card which, when it attacks or blocks, it gets a minus one, minus one counter. Uh, whenever it is put into your graveyard, you can draw a card for each minus one, minus one counter on it. It is a four free. There are a lot of stuff on Amaket that wants to put minus one, minus one counters. And if you kill it, you get to draw that many cards. So pretty good card. Uh, and definitely something that I can see why people like it. I just don't know if it's going to be modern playable. So next, we will talk about defenses. I uncommon from Shadowmoor. I will be making a video sometime this weekend probably after Friday night, around like 3 a.m. where I make most of my shooting videos about a few boxes of Shadowmoor that I have found a ton of these. I have four copies of this. It makes a lot of sense. Anything with minus one, minus one counters has started trending up and it might still be a lot of good value cards in Shadowmoor that have not spiked yet, but will spike in time. So defenses is a $2.85 from the 20 cents. You can see the spike happen around the same time. But this is a secondary spike. So these cards are secondary to a previous video where we did Blowfly and we did Devoted Druid. I believe that one spiked a week or a few days ahead of this particular spike, of this particular batch of spikes. But this is very good. I like it a lot. Whenever a minus one, minus one counter is put onto a creature, you get a one, one green elf warrior. With Amaket putting a ton of minus one, minus one counters on creatures, this is very, very good. Uh, definitely has EDH implications as well. There is a particular card in Exodus that steals everyone's plus one, plus one counters. I know it's not minus one, minus one, but it's a very unique card, especially for Brea, or not Brea, for the plus one, plus one commander, currently one of the top two commanders, I would imagine, that people are building new decks on. Just felt like I should mention that. Now, No Mercy is a bulk is card. It has been trending up. I did want to bring this to someone's, and to you guys, because I had no... I, it just didn't make sense why this card was $16. Yeah, $4, I get it. It is a very good card, and it does prevent, or it does discourage your opponents from attacking you because then they would lose their creatures. They can go ahead and attack someone else. But No Mercy, I remember this and Urza's Legacy, and no one wanted it, right? We didn't have EDH back in the day, and we had Extended, which wasn't really... It's not like what modern is today. So essentially, it was it's going to be standard playable or it's not. And this was not. Because the decks at the time just produced lots of mana. You had Gaius Cradle. You had uh, Radiant Archangel, which just finished you one blow. 
So this was not a good card back in the day, but now it has become a good card due to EDH. And that's what I love about EDH, you really can find treasures, like I could never imagine this card being valuable when I played it. Or when I opened packs, this was a card you did not want to see, now it's $16. Which gets me to my main point of this video. Let's get to, if you guys stayed with me, you deserve this point. If you played during your right sets, you will do well regardless. If you play during Shadow Moor, you are now taking it to the bank. If you play during Urza's Legacy, Urza's Saga, you did well. It doesn't really matter what cards you had, all the cards have done well. And or it's very likely that you have cards, if you play during Urza's Legacy, that are now much more valuable than they were in the past. And it's really hard to tell which cards they are, because again, EDH wasn't even made, so this card is the perfect EDH card, but for standard, it really is not great. And in the extended, it was not good either. So, here's another common that you guys should keep your eyes on. The commander version always spikes before the regular version. The regular version is $1.25, which is not bad. The commander version is $2.99. This is the 2012 original commander version. So the Otis of the versions. There are certain things that always do well. They stand the test of time. And this is one of them. Anytime you have, hey, put lands into play. Or hurry, search your library for lands and put them into play. The card would do well. And it will be extremely, extremely cheap while still in standard. In Champions, it was a good card. I don't want to take anything away from it. But I wouldn't say it's a dollar card. So when you look at effects and you look at sets, you want to play during a set where it's very powerful. And you want to have effects that are generally good in terms of, okay, there's a lot of doubling effects, doubling season, mana reflection, all these cards are valuable. Hmm, is there a Amaket card that doubles tokens? Yes, there is. Hmm, that's interesting. So that's kind of, you know, if you've, played magic for as long as I play magic you just see general trends and stuff like I knew the Zendikar fetch lands would be worth a lot of money one day because I saw and made a mistake on not buying the onslaught fetch lands and so I bought a ton of Zendikar fetch lands and that did extremely well for me I bought Aaron Mesos at seven dollars I traded for the blue ones at 12 and I just held on to them until they hit like 50 and then I got out of them now, another really interesting thing to note is EDH exclusive cards and commander product. They are very interesting in terms of speculation, especially if that commander product is out of stock and is older. This is Commander 2016. It is currently out of stock, meaning it's not being reproduced, although you can buy them, you can still buy them at Target, Walmart, if you have a Kmart, I believe there's still a Kmart, Barnes & Nobles. I don't know why Barnes & Nobles has so many of these, but it does. I will visit my mall, and I will go ahead and finally buy the Commander decks. You can also buy them online, obviously. But at this point, you are going to see spikes happen on these cards. It's just a very natural cycle. Will these spikes last? Will they not? They probably will not last. I remember Toxic, toxic Deluge. And that was like the premier card, and now it's really kind of garbage. Not garbage, I still like it, but it's just not as valuable. And Chaos Warp or something, Warp Chaos, that card used to be really pricey, and now it's not. I feel like they made a judge promo of <laughs> Warp Chaos, which would be terrible. Anyway, this is one of those cards. There are certain trends that you see when Commander 2016 goes out of print. Cards that are specific to it will go up in price etc. Now, when you talk about sets, I do want to talk about what is considered an old set and why you should always hold your older sets. Newer sets like are just not the same. During this period of time, no one really played Magic. Magic was in a steep decline. Yes, you had really great artwork. Yes, you had, you know, I, I, it was a Ma it wasn't the quality of Magic cards were, it wasn't anything Wizard of the Coast was doing. I just feel like this was the internet era, like I remember this quite well. 
Uh, I remember uh, be like, oh, cool, magic card, or hey, maybe I can go to an event and play with my friends at said event, like computer event, or it wasn't a great time for magic, mainly because digital fi- gaming fi- finally got itself together. Uh, EverQuest, we had Warcraft, which is the big one. If you are lucky enough to be playing during this time period, Morning Tide, Lorwyn, Shadowmoor, my goodness. I couldn't predict that it was the. You know, if I had to pick, I would not pick Shadowmoor. I would pick Lorwyn as the set that just all the prices just go way up in price. And it was not. Uh, unfortunately, it was Shadowmoor, which I believe was printed even less than Lorwyn. Overall, if you play during a time period where the magic power level is high and the cards are not that common because people don't have them normally, you will do well. Why? So we're going to end with our reserve list card of the week, which happens every week. Debt of loyalty is on the reserve list. Uh, Let me read to you what does and you will be shocked at the price point. One double white, regenerate target creature, gain control of that creature, instant speed. Now you do have to wait for the creature to die. You cannot just regenerate a creature that didn't die. Uh, so you can't just target, it's not a instant speed. Oh, I'm gonna grab your creature. That would be really, really good. It's more like, okay, you blocked and that creature died and now I'm gonna steal it. Or hey, my your, somebody killed that creature and now I'm gonna steal it. So EDH, it's very good. It's seeing slightly more play, but the main point is it's on a reserve list, and that is what I can surmise why it has gone up in price. Semi good card in EDH, result of a reserve list buyout. MCG Finance is getting very desperate because in standard, there's really no value in standard. Uh, You're not going to get a quadrupling of price, or you're definitely not going to get anything like uh, Underworld Connection, where I bought that for eight cents. And then it became $2.50, or no, $2.50 with a multiplier of 30. Is that like, a, that's pretty good. 31 and a half, that's, that's crazy. So overall, you have people buying reserve list car cards, which have spiked many cards that are not that great. But the concept is at least I have the card. I'm not advising this, but it wouldn't be the worst possible idea just to buy cheap reserve list cards like one of each and just to have for EDH because you never know what's going to happen like this card kind of junky not really worth nine dollars but they're not going to print any more of them there's not going to be more of these cards just like the dual lands there will not be more dual lands today than there was yesterday because some dual lands will get destroyed some dual lands will get lost bad things happen to cards some sodas will kill some dual lands eventually and there's a limited supply. And that is true for all reserve list cards, even really, really not good ones. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.